Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today we are taking a look at percent yield. Um, so right up top, um, it just jumps right into it, calculating the percent yield. So I highlighted some important stuff for us. You need to remember that the percent yield is a comparison of how much a product you actually obtained versus um, the amount you could have obtained if you had perfect results. Um, so this is the formula we use. The percent yield is the actual yield. So this is what we find in the experiment, and the theoretical yield is what we calculated. Um, that is told to you right here in the orange. Um, right here they provide you with an example. However, um, I'm going to walk through um, questions one and part of question two with you. Um, so it tells you you're going to have C4H12 reacting with plenty of oxygen. So we know this is a combustion reaction, so we complete and balance it. This is your complete and balanced reaction. Um, so the first thing you need to do is calculate the theoretical yield using the mole ratio. So we do this be because we have um, C4H12. It gives us the mass of it. So we take that mass and we need to convert to moles. So that's what you see me do in the first T. I take the 215, if we want our grams to cancel, they go on the bottom, moles will be on top. Remember guys, you need to plug your values in. Remember, when you look at your periodic table, it's always one mole, and then you just need to find the mass. When you solve, you should get 3.57 moles of C4H12. I then set up the next T. Um, this is the one where we go to the moles of water. Um, so we use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So we want our C4H12 to cancel, it goes on the bottom, moles of water on top. Now we plug our values in. You plug a 6 next to the water, a 1 next to the C4H12. Um, make sure you can get this 21.42 as your answer. We then take that 21.42 and now we convert to grams. Remember guys, whenever you look at your periodic table, the mass is always one mole of that substance. You need to figure out the mass. Remember, don't round your, period, your decimals and then solve. We find this is the mass. Step 2 is to then now calculate our percent yield. Like we talked earlier, the percent yield is the actual divided by the theoretical. So the actual is from the experiment. So that means you just have to read through here and it tells you how much water was collected. It tells us 295.3. So that's why we put 295.3 in the actual. The theoretical is what we just calculated from part one. So that's the 385.88. Then you multiply by 100 and it gives us 76.53%. Um, these are the most basic steps. Uh, question two. Question two introduces um, something we've already done in the last packet, the last ChemQuest, limiting reactants. So if it doesn't tell you what the limiting reactant is first, the first thing you would have to do is find the limiting reactant and then move into the theoretical yield of silver chloride and then to calculate the percent yield of silver chloride. So you can see here I have my balanced... Uh, is it balanced? Uh, yeah, this is my balanced balanced reaction. Sorry about that. I thought I might have forgot off the coefficients, but it's all it's all good. Um, so we find the limiting reactant. Remember, you can look at your limiting reactant steps. So the first thing to do is take the grams of one of the reactants and convert it to moles, which I did here. Remember, um, mass you find on your periodic table, it's always one mole. After you find your moles, we can then use our moles, our mole ratio, to find the moles of the other reactant. Um, when you plug in your coefficients, you'll find that it is 1.79 moles of silver nitrate. After you have your moles of silver nitrate, you can then convert to grams of silver nitrate. Remember, uh, so again, uh, values, we use our periodic table. Whenever you have a mass in the periodic table, it's always one. Then you just need to uh, find the mass, add up. Uh, you find that the mass of silver nitrate is 304.07 grams. Remember, this tells us this is how much we need. If we have 104.7 104 grams of sodium chloride, you will need 304.07 grams of silver nitrate. So then that's how we do we compare. Remember, if the number we calculate is larger than what we actually have, that means that silver nitrate is the limiting reactant. So now once we have our limiting reactant, we can um, calculate our theoretical yield of AgCl. Remember, we have to use the limiting reactant because we're going to run out of AgNO3 silver nitrate before um, we use up all of the silver chloride. 
So that's where I was plus point right here. We're going to use up all of this before we use up all of this. Um, that way, uh, so when we calculate the moles, we have to use the moles of silver nitrate. And the reason why is because it's going to run out first. Um, and you don't want to be calcu doing calculations where you'll have more than you actually have. So that's what we did here, calculate the moles. Remember, use your mole ratio. Plug in the coefficients here. The coefficients equal the moles. Next, we um, take our moles and we calculate the mass. Remember, it's the same. Anytime you find your mass from the periodic table, it's always one mole. After you find your mass, remember, this is your theoretical yield. So now we can go down to the calculate the percent yield of silver chloride. So if we calculate the percent yield, remember, it's the actual over the theoretical times 100. So to find the actual, we just have to look back up at the problem, and it tells us it produces 150.4 grams of silver chloride. So that's what goes on top. What we calculated goes on the bottom, multiplied by 100. So we find out 58.63%. Um, so guys, now what I want you to do is I want you to try to do question three. Question three is just like question two. Um, so I put out the, sorry, I put out the balanced uh, re equation for us. Um, remember, I wrote the amount that you have of each just underneath, um, and I, I messed up one of them. So it tells us we have, this is not a 4, this is, this is 98.6 grams. So just make sure you change that. Um, and then you are, you're going to do the same three steps. You're going to find the limiting reactant, uh, calculate the theor theoretical yield. In this case, it's uh, calcium carbonate. Um, and then you're going to calculate the percent yield of calcium carbonate. Remember, it's calcium carbonate because we have 46.8 grams of it at the end that we need to compare to how much we could actually calculate. Um, remember, when you're finding the limiting reactant, you just have to pick one of these. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you circle it, bring it to class, and ask me. I uh, hope everyone has a good day.